Good morning all. So this is Naveen Hebbard. So I'm, wor I'm working in SENSE as a facility technologist. Uh, this session is, so we'll completely, uh, we'll dive deep into the, the wet touch introduction. So what is wet touch? What we are doing in wet touch? How wet touch will work? And how wet chemicals and wet H, wet, H, wet cleanings, everything will involve in the semiconductor fabrications. Everything we will uh, discuss in the detail. So this is the outline of the the presentation so first we will uh, we'll introduce the what is wet touch and what we are going to do in wet touch how the wet touch will work and the cleaning of a substrate so mainly wet touch will focus on the cleaning of the substrates how we will clean and what we will clean again based on the different types of the contamination uh, like uh, the organic contamination inorganic contamination ionic and metallic contamination according to the contamination so we'll start our cleaning things so based on the contamination we will make a several changes in the cleaning process so this is how we are doing and uh, how the chemicals will subordinate for this cleanings everything we will work on the this session and isotropic and anisotropic etching of a silicon substrate so this is basically basically so it will work on uh, uh, we will clean it for uh, isotropic and anisotropic is mainly for substrate etching how isotropic is different from the anisotropic so it is mainly of uh, the substrate etching so we will focus on it and the metal etchings so we have a different types of metal so we will we'll deposit the different types of metals so how it, these metals will etched out in the wet chemical things so we will continue uh, for working on it every metal every metal we will uh, we'll, we, we are having a different recipes and different composition of a chemicals we will use it and how we are going to etch that how we will control the etch rates everything we will discuss in the in this session and one more thing is SiO2 etching SiO2 is nothing but a dielectric etching the dielectric etching the metal etching we saw already the dielectric etching and the silicon substrate itself etching and every etching part we will uh, see here in this session the cleaning as well as the etching process by using the liquid chemicals and the composition of the chemicals we'll, uh, uh, we'll consider that one in the, the next slides uh, upcoming slides and one more thing is leveling things so leveling of a benches how we are going to make a segregation of a levels right so level 1 level 2 and level 3 so how it will work so why these levels are marked so level 1 level 2 level 3 what these 1 2 3 okay so that is based on the contamination processes so according to your substrate so where it is coming and where it is going according to that we are uh, segregate the sample for leveling things it is basically it is for the contamination policies and we'll see the next for a summary now let's begin and let's dive into the deep of the wet edge. so what is wet edge? so this is my introduction part of wet edge. so how wet edge will work so wet etching is the simplest etching technology until unless you'll commit to the safety and you'll commit to the uh, uh, the chemical handling processes since we since the wet edge is working for the with the, the lots of chemicals hazardous chemicals non hazardous chemicals as its base everything we will work on it but the thing is we will make a composition of the different chemicals to clean to etch everything is fine so the wet etching is very simplest technology just uh, the wet etch need the sub uh, the petri dishes or any container will mix it together so mix it the uh, concerned chemicals in the ratios then we'll use it for the several cleanings or several etching parts see all it requires a container again so all it requires a container with uh, the liquid solution which, which which will dissolve with the material in a question the question means it's in a fraction of a second or in a, it will take time to dissolve it will make a uh, the salt formation or anything in the byproduct the first it will start intermediate then it will dissolve as a byproduct so this is how the wet etch will work and this is the wet etching works very well for cleaning the wafers and etching thin film substrate and uh, can also use uh, this wet etching for substrate etching also so as we discussed in the outline so everything will be worked out in the wet etch so we'll clean the substrate we'll uh, we'll clean the thin films Thin films uh, means it's a metals, the different kinds of metals are a dielectric. We will etch the metals and we will etch that uh, substrate. We can also uh, clean the, the substrate, the cleaning and the etching. So these two are the, the different uh, the aspects. The cleaning is it's 
surface micro machining and the etching is the bulk micro machining okay so basic wet touch process is stands on the three process first when you will place your samples in the in the petri dish where, which is having the you know, the amount of chemicals in the ratios of chemicals first that etchant so the chemical composition we will call as etchant so that etchant first it will diffuse on your surface first it will diffuse on your surface then it will start its own reaction on the surface and it will uh, it will uh, attack on the, the multiple contamination and it will start to reaction on the surface then after the reaction on the surface so it will come out as a byproduct so this is how the wet chemicals will work on the substrate for cleaning things this is just for example so just i'm showing you that it's a process flow so you can see the uh, the green color so that is the substrate substrate is the platform nothing but it's a silicon so nowadays we are using the silicon as the silicon substrate the pr you're seeing the pr right so that pr is nothing but photo resist the name itself it indicates that photo resist it will resist the photons the photons is it's a kind of it's a light energy it will resist the light energy it's some part of time i mean so that is the photo resist with photo resist we'll coat a photo resist and we'll mask it so according to the design so from the day mask the design will be transferred on the photo resist by exposing it to uv so when you'll come to the lithography things so you'll get to know what is exposure how what and what and all the tools we are using uh, everything will uh, explain in the lithography thing um, so this pr see you, you can see the slide here so we are having the design on the mask that design is transferred on the pr so now we are having the design on the pr so we transferred our design from the mask to the pr now pr is having a design with protection of pr we are going to etch or we are going to uh, remove the material according to that the pr will start uh, i mean it will indicates as a protecting layer so apart from that protecting layer so other parts will be etched out so you can see the third one so see same thing so we etched and we transferred our design in the 3d material and in the 3d concept so on the substrate so this is how with lithography and uh, the wet etching will coordinate with each other again the as we discussing the wet etching is wet wet etch bay is mainly focusing on cleaning as a priority then uh, the etching as a again the second priority first you should be uh, it should be very cleaned substrate so the cleaning process is very very important because we are going to synthesis we are going to uh, the fabricate in the nanometer scales or micrometer scales if you are having any particles in the picometer or nanometers or any microns we should eliminate that uh, the particles first so the cleaning is uh, as we discussed in the earlier so cleaning is based on the contamination which contamination you are having on the substrate so it is again the cleaning process will alternate to that one so uh, as you see in the slides so pirana cleaning is first priority the pirana is nothing but the pirana cleaning so pirana is already you heard the name of pirana right so it's a name of a fish that fish is very hazardous and uh, so it can eat anything and it can dissolve anything so that is pirana so that is the property of that fish so same name we kept it for here this cleaning because if you if if this pirana solution sees any organic things it will dissolve it in it and it will make a the cleanest uh, substrate uh, as a surface okay so we'll, uh, we are having a two types of cleaning one is pirana cleaning one is rca cleaning and the third one is the dilute hf dip it is it, it uh, will make that pirana cleaning plus hf and uh, rca cleaning again plus hf so the pirana cleaning so pirana cleaning is pirana cleaning will use the solutions will uh, use the solution for pirana cleaning is one is h2so4 and one is h2o2 so H2SO4 is nothing but sulfuric acid and H2O2 is per sulfuric acid. The combination of per sulfuric acid and uh, hydrogen peroxide in the ratio of 3 is to 1. So uh, we, can, uh, we can remove 
uh, by these chemicals we can remove the organic contamination on the surface any kind of any kind of organic contamination the photoresist the photoresist also it's a organic polymer so we can remove the photoresist by the the pirena solution now uh, the steps of pirena cleaning right so 3 is to 1 ratio so three parts of h2so4 h2so4 are again the sulfuric acid three parts of sulfuric acid and one part of h2o2 as a the hydrogen peroxide makes uh, the substrate cleaner with the organic contamination the free from the organic contamination how it will work so by combination of h2so4 and h2o2 h2so4 is a sulfuric acid and h2o2 is the hydrogen peroxide by mixing these two the h2o2 is oxidizing agent so it will oxidize your h2so4 to form h2so5 as a byproduct h2so5 is nothing but per sulfuric acid and uh, as well as we'll call as acidic oxidizing agent so this acidic oxidizing agent will target your organic contamination on the surface so from that so it will again it will oxidize your surface everywhere it will oxidize your surface and it will mainly it will target on the organic contaminations so that sulfur per sulfuric acid h2so5 it will target on whole wafer whole piece of silicon substrate wherever the organic contamination is there it will target on that and it will oxidize your organic contamination and it will remove with the oxidation process and it will the whatever the byproduct is formed that will the dissolves in the again the sub byproduct of that h2o it will dissolve in the h2o so this is all about the pirana cleaning after pirana cleaning so we already discussed that it will oxidize your whole wafer right so that whole wafer in the process of oxidizing it that h2so5 will donate everywhere it will donate the oxygen atoms since this from this oxygen oxygen atoms so the your wafer completely it will oxidized and it will make a thin layer of oxide layer on the surface this oxide layer will act as the dielectric layer for your silicon substrate okay so this silicon substrate now again it is protected with a thin layer in the nanometer scale so in the nanometer scale layer of uh, the oxide layer will form so that oxide layer we are going to remove it the dilute hf dip the dilute hf dip uh, the ratio of again uh, again the combination of a ratio is 50 is to 1 50 parts of di, di water and one part of hf this is highly highly diluted hf so with this diluted hf uh, so we are going to remove the thin layer of oxide layer which is formed uh, during the pirana process this is the reaction so as we already discussed the reaction so h2so4 the sulfuric acid and h2o2 is the per sulfuric acid by mixing of this h2so4 and h2o2 we will get this h2so5 as a corrosive acid that carous acid so that is nothing but acidic oxidizing agent so this is the h2so5 is responsible to take your organic contamination from the surface this is we explained here that it forms again so h2so5 how it will react on the organic contamination first it forms carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide for the carbon contamination carbon contamination is nothing but organic contamination if any organic contamination is there it is nothing but a carbon contamination cc bonds make the organic contaminations so that carbon carbon contamination this while oxidizing or by oxidizing will make that one as carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide this this these byproducts will liberate into the gaseous forms so note so note again so we are already discussing about the the ratios and composition of uh, uh, the pirana solution right so a three is to one is our actual uh, the composition of chemical and the ratios of for pirana here by increasing the h2o2 concentration we can increase the the strength of the pirana and again vice versa by increasing the concentration of h2so4 we can dilute the strength of the pirana so we are talking about the strength and not the acidic or basic levels if you are increasing the h2so4 it will it is going to dilute your pirana solution and by increasing the h2o2 concentration it will increase your the strength of the pirana so now it's 3 to 1 right the, for example we can take that 3 to 1 is our standard uh, standard ratios if you are taking 5 is to 1 as a, uh, the ratio of pirana compared to 3 is to 1 5 is to 1 is highly diluted because we are increased h2so4 well, this is the catchy here so h2so by increasing the h2so4 because h2so4 is highly acidic in nature by increasing the acidic in nature so how we are going to dilute this one 
so again as per the discussion we are not talking about the acidic levels we are talking about the strength of the pirana so how the strength will uh, increase while by increasing the h2o2 h2so4 increasing the h2so4 it will start to quench the oxidations of h2o2 so that's why we are going to increase the h2o2 and the increasing the formation of h2so5 is nothing but uh, the per sulfuric acid acid and h2so5 the that is the corrosive acid so by increasing the corrosive acid the amount of corrosive acid so amount of sorry um, the amount of organic contamination will be removed as soon as possible now i'll uh, coming to the point for rca clean rca so rca is nothing but the radio corporation of america so they invented this process the rca process and rca is again bifurcated as two cleaning again rca1 rca2 just forget about the sequence rca1 is the base cleaning rca2 is acid cleaning okay the in the base cleaning the purpose of rca1 the basic cleaning is to remove inorganic oxides and as well as some partial amount of the organic contaminations again so this is the purpose of rca1 and rca2 is to remove the metallic and metallic and ionic contaminations so we can bifurcate as rca as rca1 and rca2 rca1 is base cleaning rca2 is acidic cleaning again the chemical composition in the ratios so rca1 as a base cleaning so we'll use 5 ratio 1 ratio and 1 so five parts of di water and one part of ammonium hydroxide and other one part is hydrogen peroxide coming to the rc2 as we discussed that is acid cleaning right so that is the ratio is 6 is to 1 is to 1 six parts of di water and one part of ammonia uh, sorry uh, the hydrogen peroxide and again one part is hcl so you can see carefully observe the reactions here rc1 we are using ammonium hydroxide for a base cleaning for rc2 we we'll use hcl as a acid for acid cleaning so here ammonium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide since we are using the basic base the, the strong base here so inorganic oxide is highly selective in the acids uh, inorganic oxides uh, can easily dissolve in the bases that that too, that too it's in uh, the strong bases the ammonium hydroxide it can help for to re, uh, to remove or to dissolve the inorganic oxide from the, the surface if it is required so these are the ratios so we'll discuss uh, how how it will remove so in the rc1 and rc2 how the the background mechanism mechanism will uh, held in the beakers so rc1 since we are using the di water ammonium hydroxide h2o2 into that if any metals are present on your uh, on your substrate so that metals will again coordinate with hydrogen peroxide and it will make the hydrogen oxide the metal will be hydro uh, uh, hydro i mean oxidized with hydrogen peroxide and it will make the metal oxides that metal oxides which is formed from the h2o2 that metal oxides again it will uh, uh, the coordinate with ammonium hydroxide to form the metal hydroxides so this is the concept of rc1 and this is the role of rc1 now coming to the rc2 so rc2 the metal oxides or metal hydroxide which is formed in rc1 so that will under, i mean it will start to react with hcl the hcl is hydrochloric acid it's a base sorry it's a acid so that hydrochloric acid will uh, dissociation into hydrogen ions and the chloride ions see so these chloride ions will make a part of a reaction with the metals and it will form a metal chlorides so these metal chlorides is nothing but a salts so that metal chlorides is nothing but a salts the salts are highly dissolvable in uh, di water already we took extra amount of uh, uh, the di water in the rc2 that is six parts of di water which is forming the metal chlorides so that will easily it, it can dissolve in the di water the metal chlorides is nothing but salts salts is highly dissolved in di water so it will dissolve in uh, rc2 uh, uh, the di water solution so native oxide so already we discussed this native oxide concept in the pirana solution right so when you will do the pirana solution it will oxidize your surface since same same thing in rca1 and rca2 also so in rca1 rca2 the common chemical is the di water and uh, hydrogen peroxide so hydrogen peroxide since it's a oxidizing agent the role of oxidizing agent to oxidize someone 
So since you are uh, keeping your samples on the on uh, beakers with presence of oxidizing agent, it obviously it will oxidize your uh, surfaces. So since it's oxidizing your surface, so it will make a thin layer of oxide layer on the surface. So that thin layer of oxide we'll call it as a native oxide. So that native oxide can protect your substrate with by the thin layer of uh, again the, the various of oxides. So that native oxides will remove by the dilute HF already we discussed with a 50 to 1 ratio of uh, uh, dilute HF we will take it and uh, we'll clean it with that. So this is the reaction you are seeing in the, the slide the SiO2. SiO2 is nothing but it will oxidize the substrate. SiO2 will use it with HF that it, uh, HF will start to react with uh, SiO2 and it will form the complex as H2SiF6. Okay, so this composition, this complex, it will form as a, again uh, the byproduct as uh, H2O. This is the mechanism how HF will react on the surface uh, ox oxide, native oxide, and how it will remove the native oxide from the, the sur uh, sur surface. So, this is uh, isotropic and anisotropic etching. Isotropic etching and anisotropic etching for any substrate. If it is a substrate, silicon substrate or a silicon dioxide etching or anything. So, it will matter for the, the dielectric or a substrate or a metal things. The isotropic etching. Isotropic etching is the etching will concentrate on all the direction. You can see the figure here uh, in the isotropic and anisotropic. Isotropic can take with all the possible directions and the anisotropic will target on only on the unidirection. So this is matters in the microfluidics and if you are taking for uh, any maze process or uh, 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 the silicon nanobias process, the two, uh, two types of etching that isotropic and anisotropic, right? So it, will, it is having its own advantages on its own platform. This is etching base of metals and noble metals. So already in the outline we discussed that. So we'll etch this every metals in wet etch by the composition of a different metals. I mean different chemical compositions. So etching of the metals can be described as follows. So first metal will react with the etchant and it will form the metal ions. That metal ions again it can dissolve uh, in a particular etchant. So base metals is nothing but the standard potential is epsilon, epsilon naught is less than zero, the reducing agents. So like uh, the for example, it's aluminum, titanium, nickel and chrome and etc. So the reaction of base metals are always exothermic because it will, so since um, we are using the, the, comp the different types of composition of chemicals. So say for example, we'll discuss that aluminum. Aluminum will etch it by the composition of chemicals is H3PO4, HNO3 and DA water. For example, for chromium, we are having a separate uh, uh, the commercial chromium etchant and uh, for nickel, again H H3PO4 and HCl. So since we are using the different composition of acids, obviously the etchant will be the etchant will be in the exothermic condition. So noble metals like uh, uh, the platinum and the gold, we have a separate uh, etchant for the, these noble metals. For gold, we'll use potassium iodide and iodine. For platinum, we'll use aqua regia. Aqua regia is nothing but the composition of H3PO4 and HCl. So for every metal, so we have a different ratios and a different composition of the metals uh, to etch to make the, uh, uh, the metal oxides. So we have a different composition of the, the chemicals. Now uh, we are already discussing about the substrate etching, the anisotropic etching. The anisotropic etching will only possible in the dry etch. But the advantage of wet cleaning is, so we can also etch the silicon substrate in anisotropically as well as isotropically in wet etch. So this is what we are seeing in the, the same images that is for the silicon etching for anisotropic etching. So for anisotropic etching, so say for silicon, anisotropic etching is possible in wet etch as well as isotropic etching is possible uh, also possible in uh, wet etch. But the differentiation is we'll use alkaline solution to get the anisotropic profile for silicon and we'll use the different composition of acids to 
make a profile as a isotropic etching. So first we will discuss about the anisotropic etching here with uh, so the discussion already held right so with the uh, alkaline solution. So here we will uh, take the KOH. So KOH is potassium hydroxide. So that this potassium, potassium hydroxide will start to dig your silicon, start to etch your silicon and it, uh, so we will make, we will uh, use the different concentration levels by the changing of the uh, the silicon, I mean uh, the potassium hydroxide concentration. So we can etch the uh, silicon substrate with the variation, variation in the etch rates and variation of in the selectivity power profiles. The comparison of silicon etching using TMH and KOH. So here, so we are using the different types of uh, the alkaline solution. One is potassium hydroxide and another one is tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide. So here we made out the differentiation you can see in the slides. So what are the advantages of KOH and what are the advantages of the, the TMH. The KOH can attain the higher H rates. So with 1.7 micron per minute. So I forgot to tell you that KOH concentration is 30% KOH con uh, concentration, 30% of KOH concentration in DI water. This TMH is the 5% of uh, uh, TMH concentration in a DI water. So we are talking about the respective 30% and 5%. Uh, this table is refers for that concentrations. The higher H rate we can achieve in uh, uh, KOH concentration up to 1.7 micron per minute. Same thing, comparatively, it's a lower H rate in TMH because uh, TMH is, uh, it is a steric hinder, hindered base. It is the bulk base. So it will make a very controllable etching and it will make a very uh, the slower H rate uh, for a silicon substrate. And uh, the cost effective for the KOH and uh, for expensive for TMH. So KOH is very, uh, very cheaply available base. Uh, and the TMA is highly effect, uh, expensive and the rough surface after etching from the KOH because since it is uh, using high H rates uh, recipes, we are using high H rate recipes. So obviously we will get the, uh, uh, the rough surface on the substrate. So the advantage of again the TMH is the smooth surface by etching the, the substrate, it will make a smoother uh, the digged profiles. So potassium ion contamination will happen here and the no metal contamination will happen. And SiO2 cannot be used as a mask and SiO2 mask can be used here. So SiO2 can be used as a mask in KOH but the selectivity of the SiO2 in KOH is very poor compared to the TMH. This is silicon etching again with the same if either KOH or TMH we have a different setup of uh, the experimental part one is with a beaker and one is with the bath. In the beaker we can process single wafer process we can uh, only process single uh, single complete wafer and in the bath up to 25 wafers we can accommodate uh, for uh, etching. In the beaker, we will get the slower H rate. So slower H rate because it is uh, the heating experiment, right? So when you will place the beaker in the on the hot plate, so only one side of the beaker will experience the heat and the whole solution, what you are seeing that, I mean, what you are uh, having the solution in the beaker, so that will be uh, not experiencing the complete, uh, the uniform uh, temperature on uh, uh, the, throughout the solution. So that's why since the, the variation in the temperature in the beaker, so we will get the, um, uh, the slower H rate, so 1 micron per minute. So when you place it in the bath, bath is uh, giving the uniform temperature throughout the solution since we are getting uh, 1.7 micron per minute and the filtration is not there. So filtration is not there, so that is the main disadvantage of the beaker. See, if you are etching your silicon, that silicon makes a the byproduct, silicon hydroxylates. So, so it will form the tetrahydroxide of a silicon forms. So it will, uh, it will again, it will regenerate, regenerates in the beaker and it will makes as a mask, uh, micro masking on the, the silicon surface. If the filtration is not there, so obviously it will makes as a micro masking on the surface. But as well, as in the bath, is since the filtration facility is available, so we can get the, the smoother profile without any micro machine, I mean micro masking things or any debris. The rough surface, because this rough surface because of the uniformity, uniformity issues and the smooth surface, again, same thing, uh, the uniform temperature will attain in the, throughout the bath. 
So IPA is used as a surfactant in a KOH etching. So, so we'll use IPA as a surfactant, but not in the bath. So IPA is here. It's not a surfactant. So to reduce the surface tension of the surface, we are going to use the IPA in the KOH solution. So this IPA will make, uh, it will reduce the surface roughness from the KOH etching or TMH etching. Uh, anything is fine. But KOH, the only KOH, KOH with IPA, so it will make a lot of difference on the surface. This is all about the silicon etching. So we have to use as a mask, right? Something we we'll, we have to use as a mask. So here the here we are using the uh, you can see the list of masks here. So this is thermal oxide, LPCVD silicon nitride. The thermal oxide again thermal oxide uh, for uh, TMH, PCVD nitride, the sputtered nitride. All these things we can use it for uh, the mass as a mass for uh, the silicon substrate. You can see the H rates of the mass. This is called we are uh, having uh, we are called as a selectivity. If you are targeting for a silicon and if you are not targeting for other region, so other region is protected with some mask. So these are the masks. So what you are seeing in the list, right? So these are the masks we can use it for uh, the KOH etching. So we have a data for the, again uh, the substrate etching as well as the mask etching. This is called as a selectivity. If you are targeting for silicon, it should mainly prioritize for the etching for the silicon itself, not for the mask. But mask also it will etch, but it is in the limited quantity. You can see this in the KOH thing. So we can use the thermal oxide as a mask and the H rate of the mask is 10 nanometer per minute. Again, H rate of the silicon is 1.7 microns. So 10 nanometer of mask in a minute, same particular minute. In the same minute, it will etch 1.7 microns. So this is called as selectivity. So you can see in the TMH, same thermal oxide, it is 0.1 nanometers. 0.1 nanometer is nothing but 1 Armstrong per minute. Again, 720 nanometers of silicon it will etch. So this is the silicon uh, silicon and silicon dioxide, the selectivity composition when you are using in the silicon etchants. So only it, since it's a silicon etchant, it has to target on, only on a silicon surface. This is SiO2 etching. So how we will etch the SiO2? SiO2 means it's a dielectric, right? So it's a dielectric, any dielectric, any oxide, um, any metal oxides, any dielectric oxides or any inorganic oxides, the oxides are always highly, highly, uh, it will highly, it will, it, it's having a reaction coefficient towards the HF. We'll make a HF and uh, different types of HF. So we have a BOE. BOE is nothing but buffer oxide etchant. So we'll uh, use the buffer oxide etchant for to etch the silicon dioxide. Here the buffering agent is ammonium fluoride NH4F. So we'll use buffering agent ammonium fluoride and uh, including HF to this in the ratio of 13 is to 2. So this 13 parts of ammonium fluoride and 2 parts of HF. So this 13 is to 2 will uh, uh, help you for etching the uh, silicon dioxide or any any oxides. So here is the specification of this uh, BOE is the vertical to horizontal ratio. This is called the aspect ratios. So we will we can give the 1 is to 1 ratios uh, till the vertical oxide is etched off and after that is almost increased to the 1.2. And the cross section, you can see the image of cross sections here uh, of SiO2 after etching in a BOE. So first image you are seeing that A image, right? So that is seven minutes of etching and uh, the B is 70 minutes of etching. So you can see this. So we can see the lateral and vertical is one is to one ratio. For example, if you are etching one micron below and one micron lateral etch, it will go. So one is to one is the aspect ratio for uh, the BOE thing. If you are targeting for any uh, one microns, if it is, if it is, well, the vertical is one micron and always the lateral etching also, it will be one micron. This is a leveling of the benches. So this is to avoid the cross contamination across the base, across the benches. If level one, so mainly we are segregated as level one, level two and level three benches. All the process are same, but 
the contaminations are different so level one say it's a ultra pure bench so will not allow any metal contamination any photoresist contamination in the level one any not we will not use any metal tweezers so we'll, and will not use any glass waste over there so in level one we are only using the quartz waste because uh, if you are using any glass waste so in the level one anyhow it is metal free bench so the glass is made up of borosilicate so boron contamination will start in the, the in the level one so to avoid that one so we are using the quad space in the in the level one and level two so in the level two it is just a replication of a level one but we can allow photoresist in the level two so only this is the difference for level one and level two level one is well completely for new wafers uh, this uh, level one is only dedicated for new wafers and if sample is coming from the level one tools so this leveling is always for a downstream process level one to level two you can go level two to level three you can you can move your sample easily but you can't come from level three to level two level two to level one upstream process is it's prohibited because of the cross contamination of the base now so which kind of samples you, you, you can use in level one so level one is allowed only for uh, new samples and the samples from the level one tools and the level two so level one from the level one you can go for level two and the lithography is anyhow it is level less if it is not a metal contamination you can come directly to the level two level three is you can allow we will allow them all the metals dielectric everything so you can uh, 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 you can proceed in the level three so you can go through this one so what and all we are doing in the process level one process level two process level three process so everything is based on the leveling things so sample coming from which level and it is going to which level so as we discussed again so from level one it can directly go for level three tools and from level one it can directly go for level two but it can't come reverse from level two to level one and level three to level one or level three to level two so it's only the downstream process we can you need to go for level one to in the level one to level two level two to level three or you can directly go from level one to level three and the summary again uh, already almost uh, we are end of the session summary so wet touch is versatile and the simple process as we discussed since we are using the so many hazard of hazardous chemicals you need to attain your safety be in the conscious everything will matter to this simple process what we are discussing on the throughout the session suitable for batch manufacturing so batch manufacturing so we have bath facilities for every cleaning and every etching so the piranha cleaning already discussed rca cleaning is discussed and the si uh, sio2 etching the bo is already discussed silicon etching koh and tmh everything is uh, discussed for every this thing a small scale also is allowed and we have a bath facility we can at a time we can process the 25 to 50 wafers at a time either it is for cleaning either it is for etching purpose highly selective and low cost makes it ideal for mems applications it's highly selective so we can make the selective uh, uh, with a with a changing in the ratio of chemicals and it's very cheap so compared to the tools uh, compared to the other tools uh, ri tools dry edge tools compared to the other tools this is very simple processes and uh, it's it, it it required a simple chemicals only we only we required is the safety attention in us the heavily used in photovoltaic applications the photovoltaic application is very critical applications so that critical applications we can use with a simple process and we can achieve in a higher yields and safety in handling and the ease of uh, the disposal is crucial so since you are using the uh, the hazardous chemicals and the se se several uh, uh, acids in the uh, in the wet cleaning and wet etching processes handling is very crucial and after the handling how you are going to discard that one how you are going to see so you well you, when you are handling this thing the separate chemicals we are going to uh, mix it for to for, uh, mix it in the ratios and we'll make a other byproducts so other byproducts may explosive for some some conditions and uh, it will it will 
it will be non compatible for some environment so that how you are handling and how you are disposal uh, how you are disposing the semi chemicals so it is completely uh, uh, the prioritize to uh, each others how you are handling is important in the other hand how you are disposing also it's a very uh, the important aspects and while you are handling the the wet capabilities thank you